Welcome back once again, friends. So glad you're here. Welcome. We are looking at the book of Revelation, uh, trying to find some principles of application that will help us feel more and more prepared for the second coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope you're enjoying your study. This is time, I think, well spent. It's a topic that's both interesting, but just so relatable. And uh, I encourage you, keep reading scriptures with faith. Keep looking to our Savior. I testify he's going to come again. Remember the book of Revelation outline. Chapter one is all about Jesus. Chapters two and three are the seven letters written to the seven churches. Chapters four and five, John has that throne theophany. He receives the book sealed with seven seals. Each seal represents a thousand years. And he gives us an overview of the earth's 7,000 year history in chapters six through nine. Today, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the seven seals, an overview of what has happened and what has been prophesied to happen in the future. Just some statistics on his vision. <laughs> he spends six verses of the 404 verses of the book of Revelation about the war in heaven. He spends 25 verses on the first 6,000 years of the earth's existence. The millennium final judgment, well, they take up 48 verses. But watch this, the opening of the seventh seal, 211 verses, <laughs> over half of the book of Revelation is spent on that time period at the end of the sixth seal, the beginning of the seventh seal. That is where the Lord's focus is. That's where he wants our focus to be as we look forward to the second coming of our Savior, his appearance to the world. It's really 75% of the book. Now, remember... The book was sealed with seven seals. Each seal represented a thousand years. We're going to talk about that today. Today, One of the questions I get often is, well, Brother Richards, is this literally a thousand years? And the answer is yes. According to DNC section 77 verses 6 and 7, each of these seals is literally a thousand years. So let's look at the first four seals. In the book of Revelation chapter 6, we are introduced to figures that have been... Uh, come to be known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse, okay? In Zechariah, he saw the same uh, vision. Zechariah 1, 18 to 21. If you're a note taker, next to Revelation chapter 6, just jot down Zechariah 1, 18 through 21. You'll see the very, very same wording with these horsemen. So in verses 1 and 2, we see the first horse. The horse is white. White is a symbol for purity. The timeline is 4,000 to 3,000 BC. Whose days were filled with purity and, and whiteness and goodness? Well, those are the days of Adam. So that first thousand years, it looks like Adam is kind of the dispensation head for that time period. Days of purity. Um, application. How would you rate the level of purity in your life? Do you have any practices or are you engaged in any, any activities that are not pure? I would invite you, examine your life. Just look at it in terms of purity. How pure am I? And if there's areas of, of uncleanness, I would invite you to repent and change. Access the atonement of Jesus Christ. Ask for strength to become more and more pure. The next horse is in verses 3 and 4. You'll notice there that the horse is red. Red is a symbol of violence. This time period is 3000 to 2000 B.C., Whose days are those? Whose days were filled with violence? Well, our prophets have said these are the times of Noah, where the earth was corrupt. In fact, filled with violence. Application. <laughs> How would you rate the level of violence in your life? I don't think many of you are out, you know, in bar fights and <laughs> things like that. But what about your entertainment? What about movies, video games? Is there any level of violence in them? How about your violence as you communicate with people on the road or even within the walls of your family? Can you be less violent or engage in entertainment that is less violent? I would encourage you to do so. Verses five and six in Revelation six are next. We have our next horse, black horse. Black is a symbol of famine and starvation. If you look um, at verse six, it talks about how a measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny. There is a time of hyperinflation. So whose days were filled with economic duress, famine, starvation? Who lived 2000 to 1000 BC? Well, these are the days of Abraham and Joseph. 
during that time of famine and starvation and hyperinflation. Verses mm. seven and eight, we have a pale horse. Symbol is death. Time is uh, 1000 uh, BC to zero, just before the, the days of Jesus. Death, carnage. These are the days of Alexander and uh, Alexander the Great and Herod. These are the times of those conquests when Alexander the Great conquered the known world by age 25, which is absolutely remarkable, by the way. Um, pale, pale horse, right? <clears throat> I love the idea or the application of how light or bright non-pale are you? Are you doing things that are inviting the spirit and the goodness and the brightness of the Holy Ghost into your life? One suggestion on this, Albert Ballard gave us an invitation about praying so that we can receive the spirit. His idea is unique. He said, our morning prayers, we're supposed to ask Heavenly Father to guide us to recognize opportunities to serve other people. And then we're supposed to go throughout our day with our heart full of faith and love, looking for someone to help. He invited us to stay focused. He said, if you do this, your spiritual sensitivities will be enlarged and you will discover opportunities to serve that you never before realized were possible. Then he said this, at the end of the day, we report back to our Heavenly Father. We review the events of the day, expressing heartfelt thanks for blessings and help we received. And we repent and identify ways that we can do and become better the next day. I am a witness. This works. My life is different. As I wake up and dedicate myself and my life, asking for him to guide me to bless other people during the day. And then my life has been enriched. At the end of the day, my closing prayer of the day is I review the day. I go over, did I connect with my kids? Did I find chances to serve other people? And I ask him, did I miss anyone? Did I miss any promptings? Did I miss any impressions? And to let him correct me and then pledging to do better the next day. It has transformed the way that I pray, and I feel less pale. I feel more spiritually vibrant and alive, just more full of light when I have prayers this way. I would, I would uh, recommend that, that process of prayer to you. Now, the, the next seal are the early Christian martyrs. Verses 9 through 11 talk about how they were sacrificed and killed for their testimony of Jesus. These are some of my heroes. Again, this is the fifth seal, zero uh, to about 1000 AD, those early Christian martyrs. You see, they were burned at the stake. They were killed by gladiators. They were ground to death in mills. They were fed to wild animals. They were stoned to death, starved to death, boiled to death. I can't imagine. Uh, after Nero died, Vespian took control of Jerusalem, and uh, he let his son Titus um, just torture these Jews. Um, in fact, at one point, 500 Jews were being crucified every day. The Mount of Olives, the hills surrounding were dotted with crucifixes. In fact, at one point, they almost ran out of wood to create new crucifixes. The stench was unbearable. Packs of dogs, jackals, they feasted on human flesh with these piles of dead bodies. The Roman soldiers actually got to a point where they were bored killing people. So they became creative. They started crucifying people upside down or in unusual uh, positions on the crosses. At one point, rumors spread that some of the believers were swallowing their money to conceal their treasures before they were captured. And so the Roman soldiers began to cut open. They began to gut all their prisoners and search their bellies for any kind of treasure while they were still alive. It was a horrible time to be a believer. One of my heroes, um, Claudius Gallinus. He was a doctor during this time period, and he was curious about death and dying. He knew that when we died, our eyes wouldn't respond. The lungs stopped working. Obviously, the brain wasn't uh, inactive. But what is it that makes a human die? He was doing lots of medical study, but there was a law enacted by the Romans that you couldn't touch dead bodies. Frustrated, he gave the idea some thought and realized, well, there's a difference between being all dead and nearly dead. <laughs> and so he approached the Romans that I would like to interview people that are near the brink of death. And so he began to go to some of these public executions, these crucifixions, and he would talk to people asking simple questions. Do you see anything? Do you taste anything? Do you hear anything? He was trying to understand what it was that made people die and what it was like to lose their life. Here's what I love about Claudius Gallinus. He went into this moment as a medical doctor, 
but he walked away with a deep appreciation for these early Christians. You see, in his medical journal, he wrote this little line that I love. He said this, fearlessness is something that I witness in them every day. Oh, isn't that good? Fearlessness is something I witness in them every day. Brothers and sisters, if we could pipe Claudius Gallinus in from the from the pre-earth life, would he say the same of you? Oh, wow. Fearlessness is something I see in her or in him every day. You see, you and I, we can be a little more fearful than we sometimes need to be. You see, faith in Christ requires a faith in his timetable and just a confidence that we trust him and that things will happen appropriately. Now, the final, the sixth seal, verses 12 and 13, we have this list. This is 1000 to 2000 AD, give or take a few years, obviously, with our calendaring. But this is the time when, uh, when the heavens are opened and there's earthquakes and uh, the sea heaving itself beyond its bound. The moon becomes blood, the stars falling from heaven. There's all kinds of stuff that happens. If you're taking notes, just dot down next to Revelation 6, 12 and 13, Doctrine and Covenants 45, 30 to 35. It says, in that generation shall the times be fulfilled. Those times refer to the signs of the times. Men shall have an overflowing scourge. And there's sickness and earthquakes and uh, people taking up swords and warring one with another. But then he says this, be not troubled. For when all these things shall come to pass, you may know that the promises which have been made unto you shall be fulfilled. My friends, as you see the different signs being fulfilled, as we read about scourges and sicknesses and earthquakes and wars and rumors of wars and violence, be not troubled. DNC 4535. As you read your news feeds and read about these events, please know that these are happening to point us to the fact that Jesus Christ is coming again. Let your hearts take courage knowing that he is on his way. Take courage and don't be troubled when you read about the signs of the times of the second coming is my invitation in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.